2024 National Conservatism Conference kicked off in Brussels today and featured a veritable who's who in right-wing politics. Headliners included Nigel Farage, Suela Braverman, and Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The Belgian city's mayor ordered the gathering to shut down after one day, citing public safety concerns. Conference goers posted pictures showing the police overtaking the venue where it was being held and disbanding the conference for a third time. NatCon, a conference that brings together conservative public figures, journalists, scholars, and students, posted videos showing heavy police presences outside the venue. And despite law enforcement pledging not to remove people, it did say additional people would not be allowed in. In response, National Conservatism posted on X that it is challenging the orders to shut down the gathering, saying it is not committing public disturbance, adding, quote, the police entered the venue on our invitation, saw the proceedings and the press corps, and quickly withdrew. It is possible they witnessed how peaceful the event is. NatCon will have to find yet a new venue to wrap up its conference. So this is uh, very disturbing um, to me. Some, uh, some personalities who are previously uh, associated with Rising. Uh, Sagar Jetty, the previous host, was tweeting about this. I don't, I, I don't know whether he's there or not. He does a lot of things with like the NatCon movement. I think he describes himself as kind of sympathetic to that area of conservatism. Um, Rachel Bovard was tweeting about this. She was a, she's been a guest and actually, I think, guest hosted this show before a while ago. Um, Describing what's going on, and um, you know, there's this is a reminder that there aren't these um, ironclad First Amendment free speech protections, obviously in Europe. But it seems to be, uh, from what I'm I'm learning, seeing the conversation on social media, it's the police and mayor suggesting that you know, these far these what they'll say as far right figures talking like Nigel Farage, if they say something, they're going to say something described as racist or homophobic and that's going to cause public disorder and so they have the right to shut it down um, which probably a lot of people in the NatCon movement are going to say this proves our exact point you're trying to you know silence us this is the why we have these conferences and we're trying to build this movement to defend our right to speak. I'm interesting because it sounded like the police were invited in at their invitation and then left so what is the limiting factor for them being able to continue the conference? I believe the mayor and the police, I mean, they've gone back and forth a couple times. They've, they, they shut them down, then they said it could go on, and then I think they shut it down again, and then they said it could go on, but additional people could not come into the venue. Um, so it, it, it seems like some rather disruptive um, events taking place at the behest of the mayor of Brussels. It's interesting because Suella Braverman, um, who was one of the featured speakers, uh, notably was what the MP who was uh, pushing really draconian speech limitations on pro-Palestine protesters um, at the end of last year. Remember, she was the one who said that waving a Palestinian flag or singing a chant advocating for uh, freedom for Palestinians could be a criminal offense and was really part of what we saw as, the, as uh, a lot of these draconian uh, anti-Palestinian laws spreading across Europe. There was a conference uh, that was just canceled in Germany. Yanis Varoufakis, former Greek finance minister, was prohibited from not only attending but speaking virtually at this conference because there has been such a crackdown in anti-Palestine speech. And it is interesting to see these conversations happening side by side, very much siloed, and people who were very much um, championing, restricting other people's speech, now complaining in the context of this conference yeah, that this their is, own ability to speak has been well, limited. Yeah, this is why you should never support limitations on speech. Um, again, the people at the conference are saying the rationale being given is that this is going to create a public disorder because of the provocative nature of the thing some of the speakers will say. This is why you never, ever, ever want to go down this, um, this rabbit hole, no matter how much you dislike or disagree with the speech in question, it will be used to limit your speech. There'll be somebody who thinks what you say is provocative or confrontational, and it's very bad, and this is why we yeah, it. Yeah, I'm very US. proud to be a part of, you know, the left has been so consistent on this issue, um, and I would really be interested to see if Suella Braverman is asked about any of these, uh, di her direct <laughs> policy agenda within the last few months being so diametrically opposed to what her concerns are in this moment now that she is the one that's being implicated by this policy. Um, but you're right that there are very different kind of uh, speech policies. Again, it doesn't seem like the speech is being, the, the argument here is that this was a speech concern, that the argument here was that it was a public 
um, safety concern, which can obviously be a bad faith um, right. excuse that's used to I mean, it, shut down various kinds of yeah, activities. Yeah, that seems like transparent BS here. It's a, yeah, I'm seeing images of the, con it's taking place in a venue. It's not, they're not outside blocking traffic or do it's it's like yes, in america where we have free them. speech it is illegal to block traffic in three states now uh and as, as per a story that we covered a little bit earlier today well <laughs> i don't know that that violates free so you can be able to protest outside you can't obstruct other people from being able to use the public right away in the roads i don't have an issue with that but I certainly have an issue about shutting down a political conference featuring commentary from political <laughs> officials um, seems just totally insane to me and uh, a huge indictment of, of the mayor of Brussels, the authorities there. And again, thank goodness we don't have, whether we have more ironclad protections for free speech, which doesn't mean we never have any problems in the U.S., but um, this seems very bad to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. mm -hmm. National conservatism, so I should say s some more words about exactly mm -hmm. what um, that, uh, that thinking is. Because I've done some debates with NatCom people. They're definitely not, um, so you would like them more on uh, sort of. Bet you I wouldn't. <laughs> all right. On economic issues, they are a lot more pro labor and um, protectionism and uh, anti monopoly, anti big. Tech, big X, big Y, big Z. Um, they think they, they seek some commonalities, common alliances with the left on those issues. They think corporate power and unrestricted free markets and those things can be um, hostile to, can be bad things. So they're more inclined toward regulation and antitrust and those kinds of things on economic grounds, which is not where, which is where my, I have differences of opinion with them on that. Um, they, well, yeah. but they are tend toward a, but an anti-interventionist foreign policy where I do agree with them and think they've been a positive influence in terms of pulling back. Like they're very combative with neocons and all of those people. Um, I, I think they've exerted a healthy influence um, on, on, uh, on foreign policy. Well, given that there are left parties, labor parties and the like that advance those interests without some of the, um, anti-immigrant bigotry, et cetera, that comes along with the national conservative movement, then I don't really see the need to kind of say we're right about that. I mean, there's there's plenty of options in a world, in a country that has a more party, a, a multi-party system. Suella Braverman was at this conference making a speech arguing that the UK could and should leave the European Convention on human rights. So I have certain lines in the sand that I, I'm willing to draw. Um, well, but I do agree. be allowed agree. to say that. Yeah, that's... Right. I do agree that certainly she can talk about all of those things, and it's, I think sunlight is the best disinfectant. People should very much listen to the kind of speeches that were given at the conference. I think that ultimately will have a longer tail and more relevance um, than the uh, fact of it having to shut down and move, although I, I don't think that should have happened either. Hmm. More rising right after this. We're actually going to do oh, the tomorrow that's tea. <laughs> that's it. Never mind. Uh, that does it for our show for today. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye-bye. Take care.